out of the country to get treatment, right? Mm. So, as why is why would you say people are going out of the country? Is it because there's some things that can't be done here? What is happening? I think generally, um, you know, um, healthcare has not marketed itself well in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, Grace, majority of people who travel out of the country are traveling out of patient choice mm -hmm. and basically an imagination or belief that they'll get better treatment approved. You've seen on social media that doctors are not very popular. Mm -hmm. Our medical infrastructure is not very popular with Kenyans, especially those who can have access. Yet I can tell you that there is a significant proportion of what we need to treat cancer available in the country. We have a PET CT scan locally. We have all the major diagnostics that you can think of. I do accept that there is a small proportion of patients we still have to refer. You know, patients with neuroendocrine tumors, some of their treatment algorithms, we don't have some of the scans that exist, but truly these are a very small proportion of patients. Patients who need stereotactic radiotherapy because their brain tumors have recurred, patients who need some complex surgeries who we need to refer. But I can tell you in the last 10 years, there's been great development in interventional radiology, in reporting of histologies, in basically some management interventions. Yeah. I guess we'll just have to have a better marketing of our health facilities. And I think rolling up the universal health care is also going to help a lot in screening and early diagnosis of cancers. And I can see a great you know, effort by county governments, govern, governments county you know, bodies being able to provide simple radiotherapy, being able to provide chemotherapy. And I think in this landscape, a lot of is going to change in the next few years because of the increased awareness and great pressure for government to deliver in yeah. provision of cancer treatments. So majority of the travel is really not justified, but you can never take away patient choice. Absolutely. So the National Health Insurance Fund, which pays a great proportion of cancer treatment and care, you know, of course, has a guideline that they don't fund anything that is locally available. So I've also seen patients used to travel, come back with drugs, but now even if they travel for the diagnostic part, many people come back home to benefit from National Health Insurance Fund treatment, and therefore they don't need to carry their drugs because it's actually cheaper to get the treatment home, to have NHIF pay for four out of your six cycles of care rather than buying six cycles of chemotherapy from India. Yeah. yeah. What is the cost of one cycle of chemo? It, it is so variable that mm -hmm. I can't tell you. What you will get for treatment of breast cancer, and then breast cancer is not a uniform disease. What I give one patient may be totally different from another patient based on their age, their comorbidities, are they diabetic, do they have a renal condition, do they have a heart condition, so we choose different drugs for them. Mm -hmm. And of course the third aspect is we have certain peculiarities different in breast cancer. We have what we call triple negative disease, we have what we call HR2 positive disease, giving um, you know uh, different interventions for the same disease. So it's very hard. So you can have one cycle of chemotherapy going for 20,000 shillings in, in private sector and another going for 160,000 shillings for the same disease in private sector. If you find in public hospitals, in MTRH and in Kenyatta National Hospital, in Nakuru Provincial General Hospital where chemotherapy is routinely done, the costs are extensively subsidized. So very easily accessible, especially with NHIF cover. Many patients are getting chemotherapy without being assessed. All they need to have done is registered for NHIF. Now the catch is you make a diagnosis of cancer, the patient needs treatment today, they don't have an NHIF cover and they have to wait two months for it to mature, which sets them back at two great months. disadvantage. So probably a lot of marketing for Kenyans to take the NHIF cover, it's greatly beneficial. Mm -hmm. It covers for radiotherapy, 20 out of 25 sessions of radiotherapy, which is a great cost cut. And they'll do that across the board. In private hospitals, they'll pay up to 70%. In private hospitals like Kenyatta, you don't need to pay a cent. They'll cover radiotherapy. Oh. Now, something <laughs> I would like to say about cost is 
we need greater advocacy and push to insurance companies not to desert their patients mm -hmm. because of being diagnosed with cancer. There is a definition now that cancer is a chronic disease, even if we diagnosed it yesterday. And if you have a 10 million cover, that quickly comes down to around 600,000 shillings. This is devastating to patients who probably don't read the fine print of the insurance covers and get a rude awakening that actually they have no cover at all when the diagnosis of cancer is made. So probably, you know, the health advocates and the people who lobby, we should lobby, lobby, lobby so that cancer patients can get a better deal. Mm -hmm. And probably non-communicable disease as well, because I know diabetics and people with chronic heart disease and HIV sometimes suffer the same. Mm -hmm.